What's up everybody, Noah Wilcox with Noah Wilcox Films here and today I'm going to be showing you my absolute favorite lens for all crop sensor cameras. Uh, everyone's always asking, you know, what kind of camera should I get? I have this budget, you know, what camera should I buy? But the truth is it matters more about what lens you use rather than what camera you use. You're going to get a better quality image if you use a uh, cheap camera with an expensive lens rather than the opposite with a cheap uh, lens and an expensive camera. And choosing a lens is way more than, you know, how expensive the lens is or the picture quality you're going to get out of it, but also, you know, the characteristics of that lens. For example, you know, your iris, how, um, how bright does it get? Like your uh, f-stop, does it... Is it an f4 to f5.6? You know, is it a variable iris? Or is it, you know, something big and wide open like a 1.8 or a 1.2 that's gonna let a lot of light in and get that shallow depth of field? You know, um, or, you know, another function of the lens obviously is the focal length. Is it gonna be a super wide angle lens? Is it gonna be a super telephoto lens and get you super tight shots? Um, so those are all things to think about when you're choosing a lens. And, but I'm telling you, I found the perfect lens for travel videography, for um, you know, for what I'm doing in my films right now. For the crop sensor camera, I haven't found a better lens that is more versatile and just perfect for what I'm doing. I'll tell you that lens right now is a Sigma 18 to 35 Art Series um, lens, and it's a it's a Canon mount. So it works on Canon cameras natively, and but you can also get uh, the Sigma, you know, adapter, which will give you electronics um, like autofocus, and it will allow you to adapt to any other camera. So, for example, you want um, this Canon lens to go onto my Sony A6500 right there. I have the uh, MC11 converter, which is Canon EF to E. And this is gonna make this EF lens go onto this E-mount camera, the Sony camera, just by clicking it on right here. And now I have autofocus and it goes onto my Sony uh, body. So that's my setup for the Sony, but you can get the same thing for Panasonic. And I'm telling you, this lens is amazing. So first off, the focal length. Um, on a crop sensor camera, you're going to be getting about a 27 to 52 millimeter range, which um, if you don't know how the crop sensor works, it basically, this is an 18 to 35 lens. So it's just going to take it in um, by a scale of 1.5. So 18 times 1.5 is going to be roughly 27 um, millimeters. And so this is going to look more like a 27 to 52 millimeter lens on any crop sensor camera, um, which I find those focal lengths amazing. 24 is not too wide and it's, you know, it's about as wide as I'll ever need to get on the streets. Um, it may be a little too tight for a gimbal or something like that, but for what I'm doing handheld running around um, street photography, it's about as wide as I'll ever need that 24. Um, and on the higher range, the 35, which is equivalent to the 50. That's just a beautiful focal length for faces, for um, insert shots of, you know, food or uh, a sign or something. You know, if you want a tight shot of an object, that 50 is just a beautiful place to live. If you're walking around on the streets with that 50, you're going to get a nice um, depth of field and a nice flattering image for faces. Another reason that depth of field is going to be so good is because this lens is a constant 1.8 aperture. So you're gonna get that shallow depth of field. Even at the wider points of the lens, you're still at that 1.8, which can be really, really beautiful if you're trying to throw the background out of focus, um, even on a little bit of wider, wider shots or tracking following shots of a subject, and you want that background to be blurry, this is gonna get that for you. And it's even more uh, beautiful, and you can tell even more on that higher range, up in that 50 range, um, when you're, you're zoomed in all the way and you get this nice pretty bokeh. Another reason this lens is great is because it's only 800 US dollars and then you have to get the adapter which is 200 dollars. But, um, and uh, I used it for the New York video that is up on my channel right now. And I also just used it in California in a town called Encinitas where I went to travel 
um, just recently, uh, which you see right here, this video that I'm working on. And I'm just gonna shout myself out right quick. I've been shooting 35 millimeter film on this Canon A1 uh, camera. And I took it to Encinitas with me last week and I got some really, really cool pictures that I wanna share with you guys. So I put them on my website um, for sale for $5 or $6, depending on the size you want. But they're prints shipped to you, no tax, no shipping, just right to your door for five or six bucks. And you get a cool um, 35 millimeter film printed on film. Um, so it doesn't get much more authentic than that, you know, more old school. So, uh, so check those out. Let me know what you think and uh, hang them in your room, whatever. Send me a picture of it. And I love that. So I'm um, really excited to show you guys this Encinitas video that I've been uh, finishing up and it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to show you guys. And um, if you try this lens out, let me know what you think. Um, let me know what your favorite lens is for uh, any camera, crop sensor, whatever, whatever you have. Uh, your go-to lens, let me know what it is down in the comments below um, if you're about that life. So I'll see y'all. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all.